Hey girlfriends, welcome back to the channel for another video this week. If you're new here, my name is Jeronica Micea, but all my friends call me G. And if you're a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back this week and clicking on my face. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up, like, share, comment, subscribe. Make sure to follow me over on Instagram Girl for all of the fabulous updates and come back each week for weekly uploads. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing some of my shopping regrets. Now, these are not things that I purchased. These are actually the things that I did not purchase. And I, girl, when I say regret, like some of my biggest regrets, because even when, to this day, when I'm getting dressed, I'm like mixing and matching different looks together. Those pieces that I passed up on, they still pop up in my head. I'm like, dang it. It would have looked so good with this. So I'm, I'm constantly kicking myself, especially today in the world of social media. I could be scrolling and I could see somebody with things that I wanted to purchase. And now it's like probably sold out. I uh, can't find it. Or if I have to find it, I have to like wait and go on a hunt for it. And I'm just like always kicking myself. So right now, these are the things that I regret not purchasing. Before we get started, y'all could probably see how hot this tea is. I just put it in a microwave. I thought I pressed 30 seconds, but clearly I pressed three minutes. So that's why it's so so hot but the first thing on my list is the Dior the Dior Mongolian lamb fur Libertine tote it's basically this Mongolian bag y'all it is beautiful and it's like this mauve pink I don't have anything mauve pink and when I saw this tote this tote was amazing I saw first of all saw it in person first and when I saw it it was in New York but it was also on hold for someone and then I found it online now in person, I believe the tote was running about a thousand dollars, but I found it on a pre-love website online and it was $285. So this is what I did. Around this time, I was trying to be so intentional child a little too intentional for my likings okay so I was like okay I'm gonna sleep on it and then I'll if I feel the urge I'm gonna buy it in the morning literally slept on it woke up the next morning sold out the bag sold and to this day y'all I cannot find this bag in amazing condition the bag that I found for 285 it was in com amazing condition it came with tags with the dust bag and with the original box I was so hurt y'all so with the bag they also have like the CD, the um, Kristen Dior um, like emblem on it. So it's kind of like a, a charm on the bag. They have a detachable strap. The strap, the shoulder strap on this bag is pretty short. I was going to take the strap off and I was going to basically buy a new strap to wear as a crossbody or a messenger bag. Y'all, I kick myself. Every time fall comes, I kick myself because, of course, I can find a dupe to this bag. But there's just some things that I just truly want in my collection as I'm building my wardrobe. I don't want dupes, so I'm very picky about dupes. I do not mind dupes, but certain pieces, no. I want the real deal. This bag was just so beautiful. I don't know if it comes in other colors, but that pink, y'all, when I tried it on in person, that was torture because I couldn't buy it because it was on hold for someone and I couldn't come back to the store because I was actually leaving the next uh, morning it was just a mess so to this day if I find this bag I do have a certain price range that I'm willing to pay for this bag I don't I have a cross fingers that I can find it around the eight um the 285 price but if I can't find it I have a certain range that I'm willing to pay and I'm I pray to God that I find this bag because she is just y'all the picture that you guys have seen on the screen it does this bag no justice it is a beautiful bag and I love it because it's just such a unique piece this is not something that you're going to see every day especially for like Dior Dior is a very classic um brand they like to do like their classic styles the lady Dior they not they don't really step out of their comfort zone and do like fun funky things I feel like the only time we really saw Dior be a little more fun is when Raph Simmons was like the creative director but I say all of this to say I regret this not purchasing this bag every single day especially when it's fall because this would be perfect so one of my regrets so the next item I have a story behind this bag and I don't care what nobody say I'm sticking to my story like I believe this deep down in my heart okay so if anybody asks me Jeronica what is your favorite era of Gucci I, I'm gonna say Tom Ford Gucci. Tom Ford Gucci was an era. It was a time. It was beautiful. Gucci was so, it was fun. It was elevated, but it was, it still had like this oomph to it because Tom Ford was doing all of these amazing colors. They were so vibrant. I always remember around that time, I just remember 
him doing like all of these silk pieces. It'll be like a silk orange blouse paired with a silk, very vibrant royal purple with like a nice boot. It was just all of these vibrant colors and it just was so beautiful. So Tom Ford Gucci is my favorite era. For the past, I'm gonna say six years, I have been on the hunt for the perfect Tom Ford um, Gucci horse bit bag. When I saw Gucci just released the new horse bit bag, I could have kicked myself a thousand times more because I was hurt. So let me tell you what happened. I'm on the pre-love market and there's this gorgeous red crystal Tom Ford Gucci horse bit bag for a thousand dollars. One, zero, 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 a thousand dollars. I go into these modes of, oh, I don't feel like spending money. I don't want to spend money. I don't want to spend money. No, I'm, I'm not spending. And I was in that mode. Like, I have a mode of I'm shopping or I'm just not shopping at all. And when I saw this bag, I was in the mode of not shopping. So what I did was just add it to my cart. It was like, okay, I'm going to just keep watching it. It was in the cart for a minute, okay? I'm talking about a few months. And then one day I was about to buy, didn't buy it. The day that I went to purchase it because something told me Jeremy could go buy the bag y'all this bag is sick okay sick and I don't I refuse to buy the new version of this bag because I have to get a, a Tom Ford Gucci one I just have to that's just me I kid y'all not the bag sold out girl and then maybe two days later I'm scrolling on Instagram and who pops up with the same exact bag that I wanted to buy? Rihanna. I don't care what nobody say, Rihanna purchased my bag, y'all. Rihanna purchased this bag. She is the only person to this day I've ever seen wear this bag. And I don't care what nobody say, that is my bag, okay? That is my bag. She purchased that bag. How do the bag sell out one day and then two days later, she's ooh, had on like this all red, I believe her and ASAP was like going to dinner and she had on the bag. Baby, when I saw Riri, Riri with this bag, oh, when I tell you my heart dropped to the ground, I could have just literally choked myself. I was like, how did you fumble this bag? Like, how? Literally fumbled the bag. So, this right here, baby, my all time, like right now, this is like my worst regret. Like, how, I, oh, even talking about it, I'm getting triggered. How did I do that? This bag is sick and literally a few months later, Gucci re-releases like, um, I guess, I feel like Gucci is just going right now into the archives and they're like doing all of these old styles, which I love. But for me, when it comes to the horse bit bag, or I don't even think that's the name of it, but that's what I call it, the horse bit. I'm gonna have to get a, a Gucci Tom Ford, the original. And the thing about these bags, you can get these on the pre-love market for in great condition for a great price. But now that Gucci has re-released it, I do see there's an increase in the um, resale um, price for the the vintage ones or the Tom Ford Gucci. It used to be around the three to six hundred dollar mark, and now I've been seeing it around that um, eight hundred to fifteen hundred dollar mark. So I do see a, a increase in price. But if I ever come across that red bag again, ain't no thought in my mind. I'm gonna have to just buy it, and we're gonna think about everything else later. So I regret not getting this bag because Rihanna got my bag, y'all. Rihanna. I'm going to need my bag back, sis. <laughs> Give me my bag. <laughs> so the next item on my list is going to be the Loewe Balloon sandals or heels. Now, I waited too late to purchase these. I found them on, when they first were, when they first were released, I found them on so many different websites. I found them on the Loewe website. I saw them in store at Loewe. Kept passing them up, kept passing them up, kept passing them up. I think I took it for granted thinking that, oh, they'll just be there when I'm ready to purchase them. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. So, I think Fashion Week, I kept seeing these shoes during Fashion Week. And I'm like, dang, that's going to be a piece. That is going to age well in a wardrobe. And that is going to be an amazing archive piece years from now. That shoe is going to be it. I need to get my hands on them. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what color to get. Let's get both. I'm going to get the black and I'm going to get the red with the white. I remember being in New York saying this during Fashion Week. And I remember I had a free day. I go to Loewe and she was like, oh no, we don't have them. They had a size five. Like, <laughs> where's Cinderella, child? They had a size size five and I'm like, oh my God, like, did I did I fumble this bag too? So I've been, to this day, y'all, I am looking for this shoe. Now, mind you, 
When I wasn't looking for it, the shoe kept popping up on sale, left and right, 20% off here, discounted here. It was just like always in my face. And I was like, okay, when I'm ready, it'll still be on sale. To this day, I have yet to come across this shoe. I may have to get it on a pre-love market. If I'm gonna get it on the pre-love market, it has to be in amazing condition. I do want both colors. I want the black and I want the white with the red balloon. Now, I don't mind buying things on the pre-love market. I know a lot of people may be funny about that. I don't mind buying pre-love things because people literally wear things once and decide to sell it. I do it all of the time. I just don't mind the pre-love market. So if I have to get these pre-love, I will because this is something that I definitely need in my wardrobe to to grow as an archive piece because these shoes y'all they're just so good and the girls who were rocking them they were rocking them recording this chair is just getting a little too comfy child i be want to lean back but let me fix my posture all right so the next item on the list is from saint laurent you guys know i live for saint laurent not only do i live for a nice little saint laurent moment i live for me a vintage saint laurent moment girl i come across this purple and black Saint Laurent vintage fur. I believe they say this fur was from 1997 or 98. I can't remember. I remember it being either one of the two. The fur was $1,500. It was so luxurious, so full, vibrant. So when I tell you purple, it was purple and it had like black around the sleeves and black around the bottom. I passed up on her. I was like, this is so obnoxious and it's just like, where are you going? Oh, this was also back in the days when I used to be slightly, I'm not gonna say insecure, but I'm gonna say conscious of what I will wear when I go places because I'm always the friend who is done to the nines, okay? We could be going to the, my friends be like dressed casual and I'm like, what does that mean? My casual is completely zhuzhed up to somebody else's casual. Me, I feel like I don't care where I'm going. If, I, if you invite me somewhere, I'm gonna show up, okay? I don't get to go nowhere often. Do, I have a closet full of clothes. We need to wear these clothes. So when I show up, I'm going to show up and I'm going to show out, okay? I'm going to give you a nasty little look, okay? So my casual, I could just be done down. I kept getting in my head about, girl, where are you going to wear this? You're going to look so bougie. You're going to look so this, so that. And now this G right here, girl, she do not care. She will literally show up to your local Target. Done. Fur, vintage fur coat, some glasses, getting tissue paper. Child, we're wearing all of the things and I kick myself because I want this jacket so bad. I am a coat girl, I love coats, but nowadays I want to buy coats that I love. Like the same way I buy sunglasses now that I'm just like obsessed with, I wanna buy coats that just make my heart melt and I'm just like, oh my God, it's just so good. And that coat y'all is so good. I hope that I can find a picture of it and put it on the screen because she was just too good and I passed up on it. And I believe it was 1500 with like 30% off or some crazy stuff like that. And I was also like, I live in the South. When are you gonna wear this? Moving forward, we are gonna buy and think later, okay? Next on the list is this white, I believe it's full leather cropped Balenciaga jacket. Girl, I passed up on this jacket. Girl, they was like giving this jacket away and I passed up on this jacket. And to this day when I'm getting dressed, I'm like, Oh my God, that jacket would look great with this. That jacket is almost on the order, on the line of the new Saint Laurent cropped jacket with the shoulder pads, like very structured. But the Balenciaga one, it looks a little more buttery. It was so pretty and it was white. A white leather jacket that looked snow white at that. I passed on it, I passed on it, yeah. Next up is another coat because like I said, I'm obsessed with coats and it is a Fendi trench coat. Now this coat literally had me in a headlock for a few years and I did come across it. I found it in my, well not my size, but it was like two sizes too big. But the lady who um, alters all of my clothes told me that if I buy this jacket, she would be able to zhuzh it up to my, to fit me properly. I did want it to fit oversized, but this is a men's coat and it was just too oversized. It is the Fendi Zuka print mm, trench coat, but it has the white piping. Oh my God, this jacket is the sickest thing ever, y'all. It's so pretty. I believe Janae has it. And I also saw it the first time I've ever seen it in person. I was in Soho and this guy had it on, y'all. And he had on like this all black um, sweatsuit underneath. 
with Uggs and the fur coat, I was just like obsessed. I was, girl, when I tell you obsessed, just almost dying, drooling over this man's jacket. Not only is that jacket fabulous, I don't care what nobody say, the piping, white piping on a coat is sick. It is sickening, it is beautiful, and it just makes that coat pop out even more, and it just gives so much character, so much detail. It was amazing. Now, when I did find this coat, the reason I passed up on it, because I was like, I have, y'all know I have the two-piece Fendi set. I don't care what nobody say. I wear that set out. I don't wear it, I think together I've only worn it once. But separate, I wear those two pieces out, especially the pants, girl. I wear it out. I thought the Fendi monogram would be a little much because the Fendi monogram alone by itself is very in your face, is very like it's loud, okay? So I just was like, okay, is this gonna be a little much? Is this screaming, uh, I'm tacky? Oh, Jernick, what was you thinking? I'd rather be tacky and have this dang on coat on my back. Call it what you want, girl. This coat is beautiful, okay? And I honestly regret not purchasing it. Now, as my style evolves, as I grow and kind of like learn, I feel like, especially playing dress up, I learned when you have pieces that are very like loud, to tone it down, wear solid colors underneath, wear neutrals, and it, it really tones it down and let that one piece be loud instead of having all of these different loud pieces on and now I'm looking tacky but when you tone it down the right way it can be done girl and I just regret not buying it I think this is also a piece that I can find if I want to I may have to go on a, a internet hunt for it but if I want to I, I believe I can find it so maybe one day she'll be in the closet the last thing on my list y'all I was on the hunt for these boots so bad I first saw them on a the runway I watched the Louis Vuitton it is the Louis Vuitton patty wedge boots I watched the Louis Vuitton show and I was on the hunt for these boots. I was like, when they go in production, first of all, I was like crossing my fingers like, God, please let these shoes go in production. And the more I would watch the runway, they kept coming out in different um, colorways. And I said, at least one of these colorways are gonna go into production. Baby, when I tell you a few months later, I believe like six months because that's usually how it goes. Like if you see something on the runway, maybe like six to eight months later, it'll be in store. When I tell you I called every Louis Vuitton in the U.S., baby, I was searching these boots down. And most of the boots were in, um, like, Paris and stuff. But the only two cities that had it was New York and Houston. So New York was selling like crazy. Like, I could not, first of all, I couldn't get somebody on the phone. And then I could not get them. Houston had my size. But guess what? I'm in New Orleans, so I'm like, y'all, I need these boots so bad. And I'm like, who could I call who can go to the mall and see if they can get these boots for me? At least get these boots, um, put them on hold. You don't even got to buy them, baby. Put them on hold for me, and I will come to Houston to get these boots. Child, the only person I could call y'all was my ex. And when I tell you I was so desperate, I wanted these boots so bad, y'all, I literally called. I was like, hi, how are you? What you doing? Hey, big head. <laughs> What you doing? Um, do you mind going to the gallery for me? Because I need to go to Louis Vuitton. Just so happened, I kid you not, just so happened, he was actually, when I called, he was in Louis Vuitton. I said, oh my God. So he asked the lady about uh, the patty boot, and guess what? She said, yes, we actually have your size, but those boots, I believe they were on hold. So when you see it on the website, it doesn't, they say they have them in stock, but the boot was on hold. Girl, I could have died. And I'm like, you mean to tell me? I just literally put my pride all the way aside and called this man to inquire about some boots. And y'all not going to even sell me the boot? Oh, girl, the things we do for fashion. I still didn't get the boot. To this day, when I'm in New York, I'm in Louis, I'm always looking for this boot. This boot is always sold out. Like, I just don't get it. I could never find this boot in my size. But I will not give up on this boot. I did just purchase a dupe to this boot. I've been seeing the dupes everywhere and for years I have been against the dupe. I'm like, no, I'm not buying it. Nope, not buying it. I don't care if they're on sale, I'm not buying it. Girl, I caved in and purchased the boot because I actually have a look that, I'm like, baby, I wanna wear these boots. So I did get this boot. Now, the dupe to me, it's a, literally a dupe. I don't love the quality of the, um, the it's not leather, but the, Boo, but it'll do. It'll do. You want to see him? 
I, I feel like somebody just screamed at me and said yes. Let me just show you. All right, y'all, so this is the boot. This is literally the exact um, dupe to the colorway that I wanted. I wanted the blue heel with the brown, the black, and the white detailing. Oh, I have stuff on it. Now, the boot, I'm not gonna say it is horrible, the quality. Now, I feel like the heel is a good quality. The boot is overall a great dupe. I do not love this part. It's very, it feels cheap. I did pick these up on sale from Ego, but I feel like for what I need them for, it'll be fine. They're not horrible. I'm not gonna just sit here, run this boot down and say that they are horrible because they're not. And you see how it's kind of like wrinkled? Now when I do put these boots on, you can't see the wrinkles because they look a little scrunched up. Like they go down just a little and it's okay. If you're interested in this boot, this boot does run true to size. I did go up a size because I didn't know that they run true to size. So I do have a little room. I wish I would have gotten these in a nine and not a 10 because these are slightly too big, but I feel like I'm gonna throw on a tube sock and we'll be okay. So you guys will be seeing this boot styled up in the upcoming styling video because child, I, I'm on a boot craze right now. It's, listen, it better get cold out here because I, I'm prepared to wear boots. It's gonna be, it could be 90 degrees outside in, in December. I'm gonna have on some boots. We may have to put on some shorts, but all of these boots I'm purchasing, we gonna wear some boots. So this is the dupe to the Patty boot and I would recommend it. I'm not gonna lie because I'm gonna wear the dupe out. I'm gonna wear that dupe until I get the real one because when it comes to the real Patty boot, I did see them also on a girl in New York. New York is the place, okay? And the girls have the pieces. And they just was like sickening. Now she didn't have the colorway I wanted. She had the white, the pink, and a brown colorway. And she had the shorter version. I have to have that blue colorway, y'all. It's just is so good but at this point i feel like i'm a little desperate and i would possibly get any one that i can get my hands on and also i don't want to get these on a pre-love market because the resale value of these shoes they're just reselling for crazy prices and i want to say these um on louis vuitton i want to say these are maybe 15 to 1900 i've been seeing them on a pre-love market for like three thousand dollars and i'm just not willing to pay that for boots okay so i'd rather pay the um retail for them than get them on a pre-love market and that's probably why i still don't have them all right girlfriend so that is all of the things that i have literally been thinking about and i've been regretting these purchases and as you guys can see most of the most of these things are like for winter and fall and like i said that's because i'm playing dress up right now i've been trying different things mix, mixing and matching and these are the things that's constantly coming to my mind so yeah i regret not purchasing these things so i hope you guys enjoyed this video like share comment subscribe comment down below let me know what you regret not purchasing and yeah i'll see you guys in the comments because i know i'm not the only person who's like kicking themselves for something it could be anything it doesn't have to be luxury it doesn't have to be designer it could literally be zara because guess what when it comes to zara i also have a few things that i'm like dang I missed out on that. And because y'all know old Zara, like maybe like 10 years ago, that Zara was different. Now Zara is cute. She do, she do what she needs to do. But old Zara, baby, they used to have pieces, okay? Like I'm talking about timeless pieces. I literally put out a, um, a pair of slides that I usually pull out around this time. And I was like looking at them. I said, girl, Zara used to do their big one okay that they used to be timeless okay yeah, so girl. comment down below let me know your regrets and i will see you girls in the next one